Yo guys, what's up? Don Sensei here checking for you guys. It's been a while since I've done a video. Let's go ahead and let's get started, guys. So this video is going to be about the self-ruling tyranny of the Hyuga clan. You guys are probably wondering, what the fuck does that mean? Let's go ahead and let's get started with this. So in the beginning of the video, I made a bold and justified statement that many people have never really talked about. The fact that the Hyuga clan was a self-ruled tyranny clan, they imposed rules upon themselves which separated themselves from one another that necessarily didn't have to be done. It was really a grasp for power and I'm really going to break this down. To break this down further, we have to talk about how the Leaf Village necessarily works. So the Leaf Village. The Leaf Village is comprised of different clans that united and created the Leaf Village. Whether it's the Senju clan, the Uchiha clan, or the Hyuga clan. But this video is about the Hyuga clan. The Hyuga clan itself is a self-ruled clan under its leader. So to break this down, make it simple. So let's go back, I guess, in medieval times or in the golden age or whatever. So let's break this down to the fact that I guess the Hokage could be necessarily called the king, even though the Hokage is elected. The Hokage is not just a Hokage under birthrights or anything like that. The Hokage becomes Hokage because its people deem him to be the strongest, or maybe not even the strongest, or maybe the most fit, the best leader, the best morals, the best representative representation of the leaf village and their people and that is something that I really want to talk about too in another video but let's keep this the Hyuga clan so the Hyuga clan let's talk about the Hokage the Hokage is a re revolving door of different ninjas different ninjas that have basically claimed the title under their hard work but the clans are way different than that so clans each have their own leaders, whether it was the, the Hyuga clan or the Senju clan or even the Uchiha clan. And these leaders are picked very differently from one another from what I have seen. So to make a better reference, we're going to talk about the Uchiha clan because the Senju clan, we have information on them, but not in depth as the Uchiha clan. And the Hyuga clan and the Uchiha clan share a ocular kind of power. It's not the same, but they kind of originate from the same creator, from the same person, actually. So let's break this down. So when I say that clans rule themselves in different manner, different ways, this is a perfect example. Let's talk about the Uchiha clan. The Uchiha clan has a different way of ruling itself that it differs from the Hyuga clan. The reason I'm making a quick reference to Uchiha clan rule is because they share a lot of traits being the ocular powers. So your Chia clan, it seems like you are actually chosen by the people to become the leader. So to make this a, a good example, let's talk about Sasuke's father. We're not going to talk about Majo, we're talking about Sasuke's father. Sasuke's father seems like he has the love and respect of all his people. It doesn't seem like Sasuke's father before him was the leader as well. It doesn't have a lineage of genes or birthright. You become the leader because you are chosen by the people and you are the best representation of the Uchiha clan or the respected clan, the leadership you are taking for. So the Hugo clan the Hugo clan is a different rule it's a monarchy rule being said Hinata's father is a leader because he was born into the right and Hinata's grandfather became the leader of the Hugo clan because he was born into the right becoming the leader is a monarchy rule it differs from the Uchiha clan in that matter of fact and when you think about these different ways of governing you see that the Hugo clan is basically set in his own ways it's not modern rule it's an old aristocratic rule that basically states that you are born with birthrights that differentiate you from your other people it's not a fact that you're stronger smarter or faster or any of these other traits or possess greater love for every clan member you're simply born first so like I said born first what does that necessarily mean being born first in the Hugo clan means everything quality of life is greatly enhanced so let's break this down so to become the leader of the Hugo clan you have to be born into it it's a monarchy system the way kings and queens ran their countries back in the day an outdated system that died out a long time ago in first world countries so let's break this down to the fact that Hinata's father was born into leadership and Hinata's grandfather was born into leadership as well it was a birthright it was given to them when I say that when you're first born it improves your quality of life it does not necessarily just mean to the leader of the Hugo clan it represents the whole clan itself they all operates under the same system meaning that when you're the first born son of a given family you are now born into the main family why is this important the fact is, it's important because there is a system that creates a main family and a branch family. So before we get into the branch family and the details of it, let's talk about the story between Hiyashi and Hizashi, the twins of the leader of the Hyuga clan. So Hiyashi 
and Hizashi. They are both twins. One of them is Hinata's father. Another one is Neji's father. I get them confused a lot. So he Hizashi is Hinata's father. Hizashi with a Z. So Hizashi was born into leadership of the Hyuga clan. He is the elder twin of Hiyashi. So by a mere seconds, he was born into the right to become the leader of the Hyuga clan. He did not earn it with skill or anything like that. It was a roll of a dice. But what happens to the second born twin? Regular monarchy rule, he would be the second prince or the second in line. If something happened, if something happened to Hizashi, Hiyashi would now be next in line to succeed him. But no, not under the Hyuga clan rule. What happened, Neji's father, who has the same blood as the leader of the Hyuga clan, was cast aside to the Branch family. And what is the Branch family? What are they and what are their purpose? So Naruto, Naruto the series itself does a great explanation of breaking down the Branch family and their purpose, where Neji's hatred actually came from in his character development. So the Branch family, the Branch family are the same people in the Hyuga clan as the main family. There is absolutely nothing that makes them different. They have eye powers, they have everything that is the same. The only thing different is that one was born before the other. The firstborn is in the main family, secondborn is cast aside to their branch family to live a life of servitude to the main family because they were born second, a life with less options. And yes, some of you may think that the Hugh clan took pride in this, uh, this manner of ruling, but Neji is not just the sole example. I guarantee you that there are many other examples of people in the branch family that held hatred towards the main family. Who would want to become a servant? to someone who was born a mere seconds or a couple of years before you, not because of any achievements that they have under their belt, no. You are a servant to someone because they were just born before you were. And this is something that I've always found to be unjust and literally fucked up in this system of ruling in the Hugo clan. The reason why I say this is because there are many examples of other ways of ruling. Take example, the Hokage. The Hokage is a leader of the Leaf Village, meaning that every clan in the Leaf Village has basically stated that they would recognize this person as Okage as their leader, respective leader. This Okage is not born into the leadership of Okage. They earn the right to be called Hokage through their feats in battle and through the love of their people. They are the representation of the Leaf Village itself, the heart of the Leaf Village. But the Hyu clan still ruled itself under a rule that was outdated and outdone. Why is it that the Hyu clan ruled itself under the birthright of becoming the leader? Even though they themselves align themselves to the Hokage, a person not of nobility, not of blood, not of anything, but a person of power and a person who represents them as a whole as being a powerful shinobi or ninja and someone that they can align their ideals with. They would serve servitude towards that person who does not necessarily have any noble bloodline towards them. And that's something that I found very interesting. That they had a way of basically aligning themselves with, I guess, a Hokage, which I guess would take Naruto's father. Minato. Minato does not have a father before him or a father before him who was a magnificent ninja. No, he earned his way to become Okage out of his sheer power and determination. And all the clans voted him to become the leader of the Leaf Village. But the Hugh clan itself, which rules itself under a monarchy rule, which has a leader set on birthrights, is able to come into terms with that. But they still run a system that was outdated itself to them. No other clan runs that system from what I have seen. Yes, you know, we do have certain traits when we see that like the Shikamaru is the son of the leader of the of his respect, the Shadow Clan, whatever they're called again. But not all the time. The person who's born to the leader of the clan doesn't necessarily mirror that person's ability. So what exactly is a branch family? The fact that even the second born leader, which was Hiyashi, was cast aside to the branch family. What are they? What is their purpose? The branch family's purpose is basically to protect the main family and be their servants. That's what they really are born to do. They are born to protect and serve people that are born before them. And that's something that I've always thought of being unjustified and a system that would never really work it will cause oppression when it comes to oppression it leads to rebellion that's something that is known throughout history it's simple as that but the branch fam their task is basically to protect the main family like i stated but they have a specific trait that segregates them from the main family at a young age they are put a curse mark a curse mark is put on their forehead it's basically called a bird in the cage. This curse mark is basically something that I've always seen as being cruel and unjust because this curse mark can be activated by anyone in the main family 
to kill that certain person in the brand's family. They turn their brain into jelly. It's something that is an instant kill. So this basically means a lot of things. So let's use Neji as an example because he is a part of the brand's family. So Neji trains hard, he works hard, he is a genius himself. No matter how powerful he becomes, even though he whooped Hinata's ass, Hinata could easily activate that curse mark jutsu on his forehead and kill him. It doesn't matter about skill or about anything you've achieved. Neji can be killed and cast aside instantaneously. And this is something that he comes into terms with and something that he rebels against. Who wouldn't? Why wouldn't you rebel against this? I mean, putting a jutsu on your forehead that can easily be used against you to kill you. It's like walking around with a noose around your neck because you can easily be killed by your own people. And that's something that I've always looked at as being cruel. It's something that saddens me when I think about the Hugo clan. So this stupid fucking curse mark, sorry for my language, but it upsets me when I talk about this. This stupid curse mark has another function. It basically protects the eyes, the Byakugan of a member. So when a member dies of the Hugo clan, their eyes cannot be stolen from them. Because in our real world, people steal each other's fucking eyes, apparently. But this function seems idiotic and unjust. The Sharingan, the Uchiha clan, does not do anything like this. Just because a member awakens the Sharingan, they do not put a curse mark on each other to protect this eye power. And it's unjust, and it's a double standard. They put this curse mark on their own people, but did not put this curse mark on themselves. Why not protect the main family's eyes as well? It's unjust, stupid, and idiotic. It's never been explained to me in a way that can justify this manner. Yes, it played a good role one time, which involved the death of Neji's father. But if Hizashi had the curse mark himself since the beginning, it never would have been a problem. And Neji's father never would have to sacrifice himself. And it's not to say that I devalue the sacrifice that Neji's father made. No, it's a respect thing he made. He wanted to protect his older brother. But that's just a flaw in the system itself. So like I just stated, the main family has done many things to oppress the branch family, but this one has to be probably the biggest one. The main family withheld information, key information from the branch family, that being said techniques, 64 palms, other techniques that would help and make the branch family stronger in truth would make the clan stronger as a whole. So the branch family did not have knowledge to certain techniques. The main family did this on purpose to not allow the branch family to get stronger. They wanted to make sure that certain people in their own clan did not possess certain power. So let's break this down. The branch family is sent out to war. They are sent to the ninja academy and the main family does not allow them to know certain techniques that can save their own lives. Why wouldn't you want to protect your own clan members? The main family saw it fit. Neji learned techniques on his own, advanced techniques just by watching. He was not taught the 64 palms. He just probably spied on someone from the main family and learned it that way. Do anything to grasp power and knowledge because the main family knows that power equals knowledge. Information is key and they wanted to withhold information from the branch family. This is, states a lot of things. The main family did not really trust the branch family as a whole. Why wouldn't you trust your own brother? And I mean, there's nothing that makes you different. You have the same bloodline. You have the same eyes. The only difference is the way you govern yourselves. And like I said, the Hugo clan has shown that they transform itself. They basically led themselves to be governed by the Hokage, someone who's not a king or anything like that. They look up to this person, someone who claws their way into power and makes their ideals realized. And there are other clans in the system in the Leaf Village that ran themselves differently. And a matter of fact, I guarantee you that members in the Branch family noticed this. They noticed the Uchiha's. They noticed their way of ruling was different. They saw how the Uchiha clan ran themselves. It wasn't under a monarchy rule. You weren't born into the line of succession. You had to prove yourself under your power, your ideals. You had to be a great leader. On top of that, you had to have great accomplishments. But the Yuga was much, much different than that. And I guarantee you, the Browns family noticed how other clans ran themselves, and they were jealous of it. If it wasn't for Naruto becoming leader, I guarantee you, something may have happened that would have led to a rebellion within the Hyuga clan, some sort of civil war, because the way they were running themselves was something that wasn't going to last very long. When people start to see different ways of governing, they become jealous and want more. Why wouldn't you want more? You see other clans, other people running themselves in a different way of manner. Yes, you do have pride in your clan. You you have pride of your tradition but when a tradition is broken in the way that the Hugo clan was to be born first to have more 
power and rights and to have more options in life is something that is unjust. And this is something that will play a big role later on in the series. If Naruto didn't become Okage or there wasn't any change. But as you can see now in Boruto, if you guys watch Boruto, there has been major change in the Hyuga clan. And that's a topic for another video. But yeah guys, this was a video that I've always really wanted to talk about. Let me know your ideas or your thoughts on how the Hyuga clan self-governed themselves. Was it justified? Because looking at it, I've always thought that the Hyuga clan didn't really have that much explanation of how they ran their shit because it honestly doesn't make fucking sense to me i believe that someone in the Hyuga clan would have rebuilt a long time ago yes i do know that neji was one of the stories we saw but i guarantee you there are other members in the Hyuga clan that weren't happy about this fucking self-governing rule about being born first means you get this first it's unfair unjust and with that being said guys, like, comment, subscribe, and I appreciate all the love and all the new subscribers I'm getting recently and my past subscribers who are still watching my videos. And I know that many of you guys still want me to continue my series of What If He Not Was a Team 7. And I'm gonna do that, but it may take a while, depending on the support I get as well. But like I said guys, like, comment, subscribe, have a great day, and until next time, I'll see you guys later, and stay cool.